Hello, this is just a quick video, maybe quick, on how to pimp your game for Shadows of Brimstone. I've participated in creating a lot of stuff, uh, share the ideas on Board Game Geek, and I get asked about various items all the time, so I thought I'd make a video on all the different things you can do to um, make the game faster to play or more immersive to play. Um, the biggest thing that I did that I think helps the most is this um, box. This is the Hobby Lobby Artist Box. Uh, buy it at Hobby Lobby, uh, very cheap. And you create a foam insert, uh, foam core insert, to store all of your cards. Um, these dividers can be downloaded from Board Game Geek, printed out, so you've got um, everything that you need to play. I've got all my stuff in the setup back here all the gear cards up front, um, all of the mine artifacts, uh, map deck, and encounters all up front. So these are the main cards you're going to play with, and they're right up front to uh, pull out as you needed. Uh, all of your um, threat cards in this column, and some of the lesser used world cards and enemy modifier cards in the middle. Another thing that's really great is you can get, if you can find them, these um, town cards. Um, uh, people will link them to you and basically every event or item that you can get while traveling to town or in town is available as a card. So if, for example, somebody from the Mutant Quarters purchases the Void uh, Child Pistol, here's a card for it and you can give that to your users. I just printed these out recently and played with them and they were great. Um, I recommend uh, possibly doing print-on-demand for the more popular ones. You know, if there's certain things that everybody's going to want, then you print multiple copies. Otherwise, maybe just print one copy of all the cards. Um, moving on to tokens, these are um, uh, tackle boxes from Bass Pro Shop. They're um, made by either um, Bass Pro Shop itself. Let me get the cover here. You can see that it's branded, um, but they're also made by, um, I forget the name of the company at the moment, but you use them all the time for all games. So I've got um, my main box here, has your health and sanity either side. I've used, this is aquarium gravel of color. I use that for dark stone. I found some cheap metal, uh, uh, bullets that we use for our grit tokens. Those are fun. We use aquarium gravel green for corruption. I've got all of the side bag tokens in this tray along with the commonly used fight tokens, the shot tokens. And up here I've got all of the starting material. So all of your encounter tokens, the peril dice, the depth chart uh, trackers, and some revive tokens and some hopefully you won't need them, dead body markers, all up here. I've got some cover markers here that if you use the advanced cover rules from the um, house rules, suggested house rules you can find on Board Game Geek where you can get cover on any tile. It makes fighting a little more fun. So this tray will be out. I take the lids off while we play. This will be out um, the entire game on the table. Somebody will manage this tray. And this is the second most popular tray. I've divided up all the end caps into the different worlds they come from so those are easily accessible. I've got in here the... Uh, uh, town, uh, town location tokens. I've used these for um, tech markers in um, in the blasted wastes. So uh, the little pipe ones uh, are ones, and the little cubes are fives. You could use anything like nuts and bolts and things like that. I found these at a hobby shop for like two bucks in a pack. It was really cheap. Here's more of that aquarium gravel. The aquarium gravel all comes mixed together in multiple colors. So uh, I use the blue and purple for Darkstone, green for Corruption, and this red I'm using for Tech. If I can find something better for Tech for uh, Blasted Wastes, I'll, I'll use it. But right now I had it and it wasn't doing any use, so uh, that's in there. Your Elite uh, bonus markers some additional uh, tokens that are used by characters, so the Preacher's Faith tokens, the Gambler Fortune tokens, some uh, uh, 
gunslinger um, bullet tokens and some negative effect tokens up here. So this will stay off to the side, but will still be managed by somebody. And then the third tray is all the extra stuff that is either scenario specific or world specific. You've got some vampire and werewolf bite and curse markers, the coffins, some various tokens that aren't used. Uh, this is the sand kraken tokens, some horses, all of the Tradera stuff. That's all up in that. And that will sit off to the side closed and only be pulled out when needed. I store anything that's not in one of my other boxes, by the way, uh, file boxes, binders, this sort of thing, in the Frontier Town box. So these are the extra large tokens that won't fit in some place like this, along with the depth track and the town board, things like that. Um, so that's it for the, those three trays. So this one will stay out, somebody will manage it. This one will be off to the side, frequently used uh, in, uh, uh, but not as frequent as this. And then a third person will be managing this tray. So this is the bank. I got these metal uh, coins of different denominations that are fun to use. And then all the dice that we need. Typically you only need uh, eight-sided dice and uh, six-sided dice. So I've got some of these sort of Cthulhu themed dice that I use to play um, Elder Tor or Arkham Horror for that. And then some various, you know, I use this for lots of different games, not just Shadows of Brimstone. So this is my sort of generic, I'm playing a game that has currency or dice or markers, let's use this tray. And then these over here are, are hanging file cabinets. Uh, what I do is I put all of the mat tiles in here. The first, and I code them, S is for swamps, T is for targa, uh, C is for cinder, and there's two for each. There's the main big mat tiles, and then the second one has uh, gates for that world in it, along with the um, six connector hallways. Here's the T one, and the uh, starting tile for that mat set. So those are all in there. And on the mats, um, what I do is I take a label machine, and I don't know if I can get this on camera here, if you can see it, but right there, you can see it says S1, that's Swamps 1. So those are in the word Swamps 1 through Swamps 12. And over on my map deck, in here, if you pull out a map card, I put a corresponding, uh, this is not Swamps 1, this is uh, Tradera 1, or Targa 1, excuse me, Targa 7. I put stickers on the cards. So when I make a map set, I use all of the cards. I pull out the right ratio, um, make a map deck, and then when I overturn a card, it tells me which map tile this is. Tradera 7, I would come over here to the T section. I'd look for the seventh tile, pull it out. That saves a tremendous amount of time from uh, having to look stuff up. Over in this other hanging cabinet, I've got more of the same. I've got the other map tile sets. And again, it's always two. And then I've got a final one for the other map tiles that are objective rooms for the various mission packs. So here's a Lost Army, I believe. This is probably Hellfire Succubi, I think. And a Vampire one. Lots of stuff there. And then the rest are folders for various things. I've got all the rule books in alphabetical order, all the mission and rule books and adventure books. I've got all of the tiles printed out for Hexcrawl Overland Adventure. I think there's 40 of them printed out here. Um, what is this? This is my, uh, these are useful. Keeping these off to the side, you can download and print reduced size uh, cards for each character. So it's got the upgrade rules here, and on the back it's got the upgrade chart. And that's really nice because um, those other sheets are really big, and, and a player can keep these off to the side and use it when it needs to for any special rules. Plus I've got the um, special rules for any of the monster packs, where you might have to look up monster packs or allies or things like that. So that goes into one of these uh, things. I've got all of the cards. So these are player cards plus the town cards that are all the same size. And then I printed out at like Staples for fairly cheap the hex crawl encounter book and adventure book. So those are handy to keep in, in, in the file folder. And finally, um, player record sheets that you can print out. I found these on Board Game Geek along with uh, the hex crawl 
uh, mission and mind tracker, there's a set of pages in here, all sorts of things you can track for a hex crawl campaign. So that's nice. Of course, in the middle here, you can see that we printed out the hex crawl map and had it laminated. Again, at Staples, fairly cheap. It was like 15, 20 bucks. Um, they were very nice. The first one we did had bubbles in the lamination, so they did the second one for free, uh, which was good to fix the problem. And down here, I've got binders. Binders, um, this one's for all the tokens. So I do all the heroes and characters up front. So all the heroes alphabetically, um, allies alphabetically, and then all of the other tokens that have names printed on them, I do those alphabetically. So instead of you know ruffling through what used to take up a whole row of this of just a bunch of tokens, if somebody needs one, you can just find those very quickly. These also have, for example, the Grand Shaman token. I don't have the Grand Shaman model, so I might need to use that token for that bad guy. Here's the Hellfire Witch. So these go through, hope you can see this fairly well. And then in the back, I've got just all the other tokens that aren't named. They don't have any names printed on them, so those are all in the back. These sheets are coin collector sheets. Um, there's 20 per page. A little bigger than needed, but it makes it kind of easy to get them in and out, so I'd recommend that size. This binder has miniaturized bad guy sheets along with um, printed tokens. I haven't cut all of them out yet, but you can find these on Board Game Game as well. They've just got tokens. On, you print on cardstock and punch it out with a hole punch, a uh, one-inch hole punch. And over here, I keep in this pocket this initiative sheet. So while we're playing, we'll lay this out. And uh, while a, let's get the samurai here. Let's say the samurai is initiative six this turn. He goes on six. And you put all the monsters, each monster I've printed its own token. And so you keep the, the card, which is miniaturized in the token. You pull that out when you place the monsters, put it on here. And every turn, you can easily see what the turn order is by looking at this initiative track. Again, you can find that on Board Game Geek and print it out. So all the monsters are in here, at front and back. There's some big cards that don't have miniaturized because I like them big. And then the, um, the henchman cards. And these sheets are just four per page um, sheet protectors. So that's that binder. And finally, the third binder is rule supplements. So. This chart is really useful. This is all your side bag tokens, what they do, and some rules explanations for enemy abilities like assault, formation, snap fire, shootout, and some negative condition markers. So that's a very good one pager. This is the, I think, the Order of Esoteric Gamers made this. It's a two page rule summary to look up rules real quickly. And then I have all the depth event charts printed front and back. I have a flow chart that's on Board Game Geek of how to handle a town visit. This is incredibly useful for keeping track of the order of things. And then all of your travel charts, towns, uh, everything that's in town, all of the stores, along with the Blasted Waste store. And then, and these are in sheet protectors. You can just buy them. I got some old ones, which is why they're a little wrinkled, but they were free. And then um, I printed out some house rule documents from Board Game Geek. These are very good house rules to use. And finally, the uh, FAQ. So that's sort of the rules and card binder. One thing I'd recommend for the um, the town cards, like the docs office and stuff like that, on Board Game Geek, you can find, and I may have them printed, I don't see them on right here. You can find them printed out side by side in a handout fashion. And um, they're sort of shrunk down, not quite as small as these cards. Um, that are a quarter of a page. Uh, but they have front and back on both sides and they have tabs on them so you can put them into a binder and make a small binder that you give to people. So you can print up four copies, let's say of four people playing. You don't want necessarily to have, and we've all done this, like, hmm, what's at the, at the general store? Who's got the general store uh, card? And everybody has to look through the stack, hand it to that one guy, and that while that one player is looking at the general store, nobody else can look at what's at the general store. So if you print out four copies, give them to people, maybe in a binder, maybe a small handouts. That saves a lot of time. Um, so those are the major time savers, ways to pimp your game um, that I play with. And I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please, of course. Oh, I forgot one more. Uh, these are kind of, these are like printed bags of 
an expanded condition and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, madness and injury. Let me put my phone down for a second here. Open this bag. So I, I think it's for hex crawl. Somebody created an expanded madness and injury chart. Uh, you can find these cards that go along with it. So instead of rolling on a 1D12, I'm sorry, 2D6 chart for madness or injury, you roll a 1D36, you know, a... a, a uh, one die is the sixes place and one die is, I'm sorry, the tens place and one die is the ones place. So you'll see up here it's got a number. This is 65. So if you roll a six five on your two dice, you've got a panic attack. Well, I've created four sets of these and given these out to the players in little cups. Let me show you the cups. These are kind of useful too. So you can just stand them up in these cups. Keep them off to the side. I think what I'm going to do, because no, you don't need a bunch of them, is I'll probably find a box to put them in and just hand them out when they're needed. Relatedly, I forgot to show these. You can get uh, on Board Game Geek. You can find people who made mutation decks. Same thing. You roll on the mutation chart, and rather than having to write all that down, you just take the card and keep it with your character. So this is uh, result uh, one one chest portal and uh, these are really nice they're just like the town cards basically all of this reduces the amount of stuff you have to write down on your character sheet if you've got a mutation if you've got injuries if you've got town items you just have cards instead of writing it down on your sheet only stuff you really have to record on your sheet is um, permanent changes that for example if you did a level up and you gained health you got to record that on your sheet a few other things obviously painting your models is fun, not necessary. Um, I'm not great at painting at all, but if you can get, you know, a little bit of detail through basic uh, painting, you can make your guy look kind of cool and uh, with very basic techniques, make some of the detail pop out. So it's fun to, to have these guys on the table. I already showed these. These, um, these are bead containers, so you can unscrew this top and they, un screw together like this, but you end up with a little tray. So rather than feed each person individually as they need it in this sanity damage token, you can just pass out these cups and put a bunch in them and they sit at the edge of the table. So you can have a bunch of sanity and health tokens on one end of the table, sanity health on the other end of the table. And uh, that way people don't have to ask for this all the time. So these, uh, find them in a craft store. They're bead holders. They screw together and stack really well. They're great. Um, finally, this is kind of fun. This is, uh, if you ever play the gunslinger, uh, you'll find online these um, fidget spinners that, uh, uh, they're really good fidget spinners too, that look like a revolver and you can even uh, remove the bullets from them. So you can use this as your uh, bullet tracker if you are the gunslinger. Um, and I said finally, but one other thing I recommend is uh, in a previous life I played a lot of poker. Um, I had some clay chips made for my poker club. So uh, we use um, some nice poker chips for experience tokens. So when you gain five experience, you get a white. Red is 25 experience, gray is uh, 100, and the blue are 500. So as you're playing the game, you've got people playing with their poker chips. they got a bunch of cards in front of them. They're playing with their money, and it really takes on this feel of sitting at a poker table in the Wild West, uh, playing this game uh, with all of your friends. It's super fun. I highly recommend doing it. In the end, a lot of this is designed to save time. This saves a tremendous amount of time. Uh, the money saves time. The town card saves a ton of time. Having all this organized saves time. So, uh, oh, and, and this more than anything, the um, the map, map tiles being ordered in the correct order and labeled on the cards saves a tremendous amount of time along with the binders so that you can spend more time playing the game and less time looking for that thing you need. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I've got a lot of this stuff in a, in a Google Drive that I can share with you if you need any of this material to print out for yourself. Uh, but until then, um, may all your hold back the darkness rolls be high and your grit be plentiful. <laughs> have a good one.